Alrighty, today we're just going to go over some tips and the proper procedure for using HANA checkers. I have the phosphate uh, low range here that we're using today, but in general, except for different times, which you can pick up out of the instructions, the tips to get accurate readings are the same. All right, everybody. So one of the first tips is when filling this cuvette, you want to get as close to accurate as possible. So my recommendation would be to use a pipette. There are a couple bucks. You can pick them up, you know, a few of them from your local fish store or Amazon or anything like that. And when you're getting close to the end, you want to get it so the bottom of this circle here, this is called the meniscus, and you want to get it so that is on the line. You don't want it so where it is right now, where the top lines up, that's not actually 10 milliliters. When just add a little bit easier to do when you're not looking through a camera. Right there, where the bottom of that arc is on the line, that's 10 milliliters. All right, now that you have it filled with 10 milliliters, you wanna take something like a tissue or a paper towel or some toilet paper or something like that, and you wanna wipe down your cuvette to eliminate any fingerprints or anything like that that you would have gotten on it. This reads by taking a light sensor and shining it through so your fingerprints will alter the numbers. Next, when you're opening the reagent packets, just make sure to tap it down a little bit first. You don't want to waste any of the product in here because that's gonna give you an inaccurate reading if you don't have it as precise as possible. All right, once you have the reagent open, you wanna pinch it into a little Groove so that you can get the reagent down into your cuvette as cleanly as possible. Carefully dump it in and just tap it a little bit so you get all the excess that's in there. You can check, still a little bit in there. Tap it around, loosen it up. And you want to get all the reagent you possibly can in there so that your reaction is as accurate as possible. For the HANA phosphate checker, you just want to test, shake gently for two minutes. So set yourself a timer or your watch or something like that and just shake gently for two minutes. All right, now that that's been shaken for two minutes, again, you want to wipe everything down with the tissue and get as many fingerprints or anything like that off. So after you've wiped off your cuvette, everything's clean, it's all shaken up, you're going to add it in, close your cover, press and hold until you see it start to count. It's going to count to three minutes. Alright, and so that's giving me a reading of 0.04. Using the various HANA checkers is similar. The only real difference is, is in how long you mix the reagent after adding it to your cuvette. So once you pour it in, how long you're gonna mix. And then once you add it back in here for the second reading, how long it counts down. Um, HANA nitrate is seven minutes, for example. This one was three minutes and this is two minutes, I believe, off the top of my head. Um, but as far as how to use them, it's relatively the same. Just check the booklet, it'll show you those different times. The big tips for getting accurate readings every time are make sure you're putting exactly 10 milliliters of uh, sample water in and get as much of the reagent out of your packet as physically possible. 
Um, you want to tap it and make sure you're clearing any of the excess that might be trapped up in the corners or something like that. That way you're getting as much as possible. Shake it according to the directions and wait the appropriate amounts of time. Make this do the hard work of counting down. Use the timer function. Hold down on it on that C2. After you add hold down, use the timer function as opposed to timing it yourself. Especially with the nitrate checker, seven minutes. You might walk away, you might do something, miss the time by a little bit. Just hold down on it, let it count down, and then as soon as it's done counting, it's going to read the proper number. All right, so we've talked about a little bit of how to use the HANA checkers. What we have not discussed yet is are they worth it? Um, they're not the most affordable test kit out there. They recently went through a price increase, so they're running about $65 a test right now. You can buy the big bulk kit, but that's expensive for a one-time purchase. Um, so for me, like I bought them one at a time. And let me preface this with saying that I am not sponsored by Hannah. I wish I was. Um, if for some reason Hannah is watching this video, please reach out. I'd love a sponsorship. I will talk about all your products. Um, but I'm not. I had to buy them. So that being said, I like the product. Um, I'm very bad at determining shades of colors. So judging something on a, you know, a color panel or a color wheel or something like that is really hard for me to tell the difference between, you know, 20, 10, zero. For example, the 90 gallon, I was just testing it in the beginning with the little, you know, the strips, you dip them in. I think it was the API tests, you dip it in. It gives you a broad spectrum of tests. And to me, it looked like it was reading about 15 parts per million. Come to find out when I get the Hannah checker, it's reading like one, um, which is part of the reason I think I have this dyno problem that I have now. So having something that just prints me out a number, I can see my nitrate is currently you know, 8.6. It's good enough. The accuracy range on them, okay, plus or minus 0.1. I personally don't care if my nitrate's plus or minus 0.1. If I have it 10.2, I don't care if it's 10.3 or 10.1. That's well within a window I'm comfortable with. I think that's well within a window anyone in this industry and in this hobby is comfortable with. Uh, the most specific that I'll definitely say is worth it, if you only can get one, is the copper checker um, for like a medicated quarantine or something like that. You have a very small range of accuracy for therapeutic without being toxic. So I'm trying to keep mine at 2.25. Um, so the HANA checker gives me a very accurate number and I know, okay, I'm running, you know, 2.2. I'm fine with that for right now because it's above two, it's less than 2.5. Keep an eye on that. I can check it again later. If it drops, I'll add a little, but I'm happy. Um, with the others where that you're judging it, if I'm off by 0.5 because my eyesight's bad, I might not even be in therapeutic. You know, if I'm aiming for two, but my eyesight's off, I might be below the 1.5 therapeutic. So for me, they're worth it. It's a little expensive. Everything in this hobby, unfortunately, is a little expensive. But if you're going to have to pick where to spend the money, that would be the first thing I would go with so you know your numbers are as close to accurate as possible. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. Please... Feel free to... Oh, hi, Ziggy. Yes. Uh, you want to say hi? Oh, we're going to have company. All right. Yes, say hi. We're saying bye. Okay. Please feel free to subscribe. Leave a like on the video if you liked what you saw. I'm trying to grow this YouTube channel. So anything helps. And thank you for watching. Bye. Say hi. Look.
attention to other things. We should make a puppy YouTube channel. Where's the puppies? <laughs>